Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to programmatically loop through a collection of data within the context of JSX in order to render one component for each item in the collection. Let's dive right in. Okay, so in order to save a bunch of meaningless typing that has no educational value, I've already created this new raw JavaScript array of pet data. So right now, I want you to pause this video and find the link or resource for this lesson. It should be named something like reference copy and paste or copy and paste code or copy and paste data. Anyways, you'll find this link and then just copy this code in the JavaScript column into your clipboard. So just select this entire const pets equals square brackets, just copy that. And then back within the code pen that we've been working on throughout all of these lessons, up at the very, very top, even up above our, our app function, just create a new line at the top and paste in your clipboard, just like this. Now, right away, I want to say that this is not the ideal or proper way to store data in memory with React. Don't worry, in our very next lesson, we'll learn about the React-ish or component way to store app data. For now, in this lesson, the only thing we're learning about or worrying about is how to loop through an array of data and render a component once for each of the items. Now, yes, there are only five pets in this array, but you can use your imagination and picture there could be 500 pets in the array. The point is, we need a way to automatically or programmatically loop through this collection of items and render a pet component once for each item, right? Because we don't want to have to type that out manually for each pet. So the question becomes, how can we make that happen programmatically within the context of JSX here? Well, first, let's talk a bit about how JSX works. So check this out. You don't need to type this part in with me, but at the beginning of our unordered list within this JSX, we could just actually include curly brackets to include a bit of JavaScript. And then in JavaScript to create an array, you can just have square brackets. And then inside this array, I could have one list item, right? That says, hello. And then right after that list item, I could have a comma, right? Just like an array and then have another list item. And it could say, hey. Now, if we check the preview area, we see two list items, right? Hello and hey. And we didn't have to do anything to convert this array into a string because it's already JavaScript. That's the beauty of JSX. It's not like at the end of defining this array, we had to say dot join to convert it into a string. The point that I'm trying to make here is that within JSX, we are free to include JavaScript within curly brackets. And then you can literally just include an array right? An array of elements or an array of components. So with that in mind, now I really want you to follow along and type this out with me. Within our unordered list, I want you to hollow out everything we have. So including the three pets that we've already included here, delete all of those and that array test hello, hey code I just typed in. So now we just have an empty unordered list. Now check this out. Within there, let's have curly brackets to include a bit of JavaScript. And then we know that our collection of data, right, that could potentially have a hundred pets or 500 pets in it, it's in a constant variable named pets. So within our curly brackets in the unordered list, we can just say pets, and that's an array, just a JavaScript array. And in JavaScript, every array has access to a method named map. So pets dot map in parentheses to call map. Now this specific code that I'm highlighting right now, this has nothing to do with React. This is sort of getting into the beauty of React. There's not tons and tons to learn about React. A lot of it is just your JavaScript skills being applied in general. What I'm getting at is we just want to return an array of elements or components. And in JavaScript, the map method works like this. Essentially, in these parentheses, you give it a function, and then it's going to call whatever function you give it once for each item in this collection of data. If that doesn't make perfect sense right now, that's okay. We're going to walk through this step-by-step step right now. 
So within the parentheses of map, I want you to create a function with me. So function, parentheses, after those parentheses, curly brackets. Inside those curly brackets, we can drop down. Don't worry, in just a few minutes, we can convert this into an ES6 arrow function. So the code seems a bit more clean or minimalist, but for now, I wanna actually really spell it out. Okay, so this function is going to get called once for each item in our collection or array. And the idea is that map is going to assemble or generate a new array. Here's how it works. Within the body of this function, whatever we return is what's going to get added onto a brand new array that map returns. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay. I think this will make things clear. So this function is gonna get called once for each item. So within these parentheses, we want to add a parameter. We could name it anything, but let's just call it lowercase pet. Okay, now within the body of this function, we can access the current pet that has been looped to via this parameter name of lowercase pet. This is where things might start to make sense. What we want to return is an uppercase pet component, right? Just like before. And we know that we want to give this props. So for example, we would give it a prop of name and we would set that to equal well, we don't actually need quotes here because we're not going to actually type in a new string of text. So get rid of the quotes, just name equals, and then to include JavaScript, it's curly brackets. And we would just say pet, lowercase pet, right? The current item in the array that's been looped to dot name. And then we would want to give a prop of species for this component. So species equals curly brackets, lowercase pet dot species. Let's give it a final prop of age. So age equals curly brackets, lowercase pet dot age. And then finally, just for internal React performance reasons, we do want to include a prop named key. And let's set this to equal curly brackets pet dot ID. If you're wondering what ID is, you'll notice in our array, each pet has a unique ID value. And I just typed in random numbers. The idea is that React has this unique identifier or key to track each component or each instance of the component, okay? Now, before we worry about cleaning this code up to use modern ES6 syntax, let's check out our preview area. Perfect, we see all five pets. This means that even if our array of data contained 5,000 pets, we just wrote this one little piece of code and the entire collection is going to be converted into our pet components. So ultimately, this lesson didn't really have much to do with React inherently. However, it did begin to show us the true nature and usefulness of JSX. At this point, let's go ahead and convert this traditional anonymous function into a more modern ES6 arrow function. If you have no idea what that means, that's okay. Essentially, it's just a more modern JavaScript syntax that will make our code look a bit more clean or minimalist. And again, this syntax difference doesn't have anything to do with React. This is just general JavaScript knowledge. Okay, but go ahead and do this with me. So we can actually get rid of the word function here. And then since we have precisely one parameter, we don't need the parentheses around it. So you can get rid of the opening parentheses right before pet and the closing parentheses right after pet. Okay, now right after that parameter, we want to include the arrow symbol, which is just the equal sign and the greater than symbol squished together like this. Okay, now this code also does not need to sit on its own line. So we can get rid of this white space right before return, just backspace up so it sits on the same line of code. Let's do the same thing here. Right, we don't need this line break and white space here. So right before this closing curly bracket, just delete that so it's on the same line. Now, if the body of our function only contains one statement or one line of code, we actually don't need the curly brackets around the body of the function. So right after the arrow symbol, we do not need this opening curly bracket. So we can get rid of that. And then we also don't need this closing curly bracket right after the end of our pet component right here. So we can delete that. Okay, and then if the body of your function sits on the same line like this, you actually don't need to include the word return. It's just implied or assumed. So we can get rid of return. Cool. So that's a lot cleaner. And now this entire process of programmatically looping through an array 
can fit on a single line of code. And if we really stop and look at the code, it's very intuitive. You can glance at this and immediately see what's going on. And that's actually going to bring this lesson to a close. In our next lesson, we're going to learn about perhaps the single most important topic in all of React. It's something called state. State is how we store the data of our app in memory with React. State really brings us back to the defining characteristic or the most impressive part of React. And that is that as our state data changes, React automatically re-renders our interface for us without us needing to manually call render again, like we are currently doing at the bottom of this app. Right? Remember, we set a JavaScript interval that's going to fire once every second or every thousand milliseconds, and then we are manually calling React DOM render and re-rendering our application. This type of setup works, but it's not the typical or standard or ideal way of setting up React. As we'll see in our next lesson, we don't need to worry about calling render more than once. We can just render our application once, and then if we ever update its state, React is smart enough to know to re-render again on its own. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay. State is a big topic. I wouldn't expect you to understand it during my last 30 second ramble. That's why we're going to dedicate the entire next lesson to state. This should be a big moment in your React journey. I'm excited to jump through this with you. So let's keep things rolling and I'll see you then. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15 hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.